Okay, it's been a long time since I've posted anything, but I uh, haven't really had any cosplay projects. But on the other hand, well, anyway, if you uh, saw my Tucson Comic Con photos, you saw me wearing a kilt in that. And uh, one of the accessories that's supposed to go with a kilt is a skein do. It's a little dagger, it's supposed to tuck into the sock. And um, I see a few of them out there that I like, and, but uh, on the other hand, those are really, really expensive. I've seen some other ones out there. They're fairly simple, uh, but you know they're really hard to find. They're almost custom work. So I'm gonna have. To, so I'm, I'm at the point where I'm gonna have to like you know do my own. So what I decided to do was uh, I went to AtlantaCutlery.com and I bought a little knife blade blank like this. It's about the uh, blade is about three and a half inches long. Uh, it's got a little tang on it. It's even got uh, threading on that, so you know I could even put a nut on there. Put, you know, make a proper little knife out of it but I had a different plan um, I do a little woodworking and I've got some uh, quarter inch boards laying around and the plan is to uh, make myself a little uh, a little um, uh, well handle for this and uh, handle and sheath so anyway the plan is I'm going to sandwich some uh, a strip a little thin strip of walnut about the uh, same thickness as the blade, more or less, uh, between a couple uh, bits of cherry, uh, qu quarter inch thick, and then uh, cap it with a little piece of maple here. And then uh, when I sand it, you know, I'll take be taking the hard edges off and everything, and the same thing on the end here. And then when I make a sheath, uh, the sheath is going to be pretty much the same thing, a little maple cap uh, on the end here. But the uh, only difference is I want to use some of these, uh, see if I can use one of these uh, rare earth magnets to uh, actually snug the sheath up against the, uh, up against the handle. Because, as you can see, those magnets are pretty strong. One of those little magnets will hold this, uh, hold this knife in place. So that would hold that, uh, hold that sheath very firmly up there. So anyway, let me go ahead and get started. I got to, you know, cut out some wood. Uh... Do some gluing. It's it's a fairly simple process, but again, I'll uh, I'll I'll post all the steps and see how it works out. And so, with that, uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, part two. Um, went out and uh, on my table saw I just cut some blanks out of this quarter inch cherry I had, uh, three and a quarter inches long, and uh, one and a quarter inches wide. And I also did the same with a couple pieces of walnut. But again, the plan is to uh, sandwich the walnut between the cherry. And don't worry about the burn marks from the table saw. Those will uh, those are going to sand out. And again, that's the plan. So anyway, uh, I have adjusted my plan a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to recess the blade a little bit further into the uh, handle than I'd planned. So uh, what's going to happen is these uh, walnut blanks, which I have uh, sanded down to the uh, thickness of the blade, I'll show you here. Yeah, just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the depth of the blade out on the walnut. I'm going to use a use a, a pen or a marker or something so I can see the lines very clearly. And then I'm going to cut that out on my scroll saw. You could certainly use you know a coping saw or something like that if you have it. And uh, once I've done that, I'll show you where I'm at. So talk to you in a few. Bye. All right. Uh, well, there's the next step done. Uh, what I did, again, I just traced the outline of the blade on the uh, hilt and the sheath blanks and uh, then used my scroll saw to cut that out. Now, I'm not too worried about, again, how much space there is in the sheath blank. I have a plan to hold that in place. Uh, uh, on the other hand, I'd like a little bit more space right here around the tang of the blade uh, just so I can get a little bit more epoxy in there uh, so I get a decent bond between the blade and the epoxy and the wood so I'm just gonna take just a hair more out right there uh, you know eighth of an inch or so uh, no well sixteenth of an inch or so and then uh, the next step will be to actually glue up the uh, blanks so that's kinda what it's gonna look like so with that uh, I'll come back and show you how that worked out bye Okay, next thing I did was I took a couple of uh, the blanks that are going to be used for the sheath and I put the uh, rare earth magnets into them. And what will happen is when the blade slides into the sheath, the tip of it's going to catch on those magnets or will be caught by those magnets. And, well, yeah, that's going to be pretty strong. Uh, it'll hold the 
hold the sheath onto the blade. I mean, it won't be hard to take off. <laughs> well, not two-handed, but one-handed. There you go. So anyway, uh, the uh, magnets are, again, there you go, three-tenths of an inch in diameter. That They fit very, very snugly inside a uh, five-sixteenth inch hole. Uh, and uh, you want to drill them out, obviously, to... Uh, uh, 0.11 inches deep, maybe just a hair hair uh, deeper because you want them. Uh, uh, you don't want them proud. Anyway, what'll happen is when this gets sanded down, the uh, sanding is going to go around the spot where the magnet is. Magnet's going to be right at the tip. So, anyway, uh, I'll show you the next step when it's done. Bye. All right, next update. Um, anyway, what I did was I went ahead and I took a couple of the blanks and I sandwiched that piece of uh, walnut in here in them. Uh, this is the hilt portion of it. And I glued a, a bit of maple to the top of it to hide that end grain. I don't want to show that. but And it's, it's a little large right now, but the plan is I'm going to go back. I'm just going to sand that down. And then uh, I'm going to use the... Uh, uh, the belt sander I have, and I'm just going to take off, very, very gently take off the uh, sharp corners here. I just want to round this over, make it a little bit more comfortable in my hand. Uh, the, the sheath part of it, I uh, mounted the blade, well, dry mounted the blade in the uh, hilt, and then traced the shape of the blade on the, uh, on the sheath portion, and I left about, well, let's show you. I left about that much of uh, that much wood all the way around it. Now I do have the magnets in place, and you can see they're holding very strong here, just on the tip of the blade. The uh, the magnets are actually again they're actually screw. Uh, I drilled a very shallow hole uh, in, in the sandwich here and mounted them so they're just under the wood, but there's plenty of strength there, and that's going to hold this uh, sheath in place. So anyway, uh, again the idea is to take off, you know. Take it off. Uh, take this down very, very slowly, and then once I'm done uh, with the uh, power sanding, I'm going to actually hit this with some hand sanding, and then after I'm done hand sanding, I'm going to work in a little bit of ah, there we go. This stuff, Danish oil, uh, makes a really, really good hand rub finish. Uh, looks, uh, you know, looks amazing once it's done. Uh, of course. Got to get it done. So anyway, uh, let me uh, log off for now, or well, sign off for now, and uh, I'll show you what the how things are looking at for the next step. Bye. Okay, sanding is done. Uh, what I did was I used uh, 120 grit on my belt sander, and I uh, and then I used the belt sander to take you know large amounts of material off. That way, I get to get these corners rounded over, uh, shape the. Uh, uh, whatever this thing's called and basically do the do the rough sanding then i went with my random orbit sander you could certainly use uh you could certainly do this by hand but what i did at that point was i used the uh, random orbit sander to do with uh, some 150 grit sandpaper to take the rough edges off of it uh off of everything and then i finished up with some uh 220 grit sandpaper by hand and got a nice uh, smooth finish it's now it's not a it's not a perfect finish by any means but it's uh, it's pretty close to where i want it uh, because the next step again is to take the danish oil and i'm actually going to rub the danish oil into the wood using this 600 grit wet, wet dry sandpaper and i'll have to get cambot to uh, show you how that works uh, or excuse me, to run, hold the camera while I show you how that works, because that is definitely a two-handed operation. So uh, with that, I'll be back in a few. Bye. Uh, next thing that's up is actually putting a finish on the uh, hilt and the scabbard pieces. And what I've done so far is I sanded them all down to 220 grit using both a power sander and by hand. But uh, what i got to do is put some Danish oil finish on them. So uh, what you want to do with this is get some wet dry sandpaper. This is 600 grit. You can certainly go with a slightly higher grit, say in the 400 range. Uh, you really don't want to go with anything much finer. But basically what you're going to do is you're just going to dip the, uh, dip the piece in the oil. And that's what it's kind of, kind of going to look like right there. But what you need to do now is actually take this wet dry sandpaper and just rub the oil 
into the wood. Now what this is going to do is going to create slurry. Uh, the sanding dust, the very fine sanding dust, is going to mix with the oil and it's going to fill the pores of the wood. It's going to give it a very deep, uh, a very, very long lasting, a very durable finish. Uh, but you, like you can see, you do want to wear gloves for this because this is kind of some messy stuff. Uh, you do want to work outdoors because of the fumes. And you got to be very, very careful because uh, any rags that you use to wipe off the oil while you're doing this, they can, cause they can spontaneously combust simply because of the nature of the oil. Uh, so do take your time, do be careful, uh, but this is going to be worth it in the end. You can kind of see where we're getting, getting to right now. I'm going to be doing this over and over and over for a while. Uh, what will happen is every so often I will just stop. I'll grab a paper towel. If I was doing a large piece of furniture, I'd use, uh, I'd use a rag, but I'm just going to take the towel, I'm going to wipe off the excess oil, and then let that sit for a little bit. Now, for the uh, inside of the uh, scabbard piece, I am going to just drizzle some oil down there and let it soak in on its own. I'm going to try to keep the oil out of the inside of the hilt piece simply because I'm going to be epoxying in there, and the epoxy is probably not going to stick very well to an oiled finish. So, with that, I'll go ahead and cut and say thanks, Cambot, for uh, this little interlude. So, talk to you in a few. Bye. Okay, there it is. Uh, finished product. Um, anyway, what I did was the uh, to get the blade in place, I dropped some epoxy down in that groove and then uh, uh, you know slid the blade into place. I wanted to make sure I got enough epoxy in the groove to actually hold it in well, but not so much where it was going to come oozing out. So to uh, alleviate that problem, I made sure I taped the blade off around this area and the top of the uh, knife, uh, or sorry, the top of the hilt right up here uh, around the hole. So anyway, uh, it came out pretty good, I think. The uh, wood looks very nice. It's silky smooth to the touch. Uh, the walnut and the maple contrast very nicely with the cherry. And here's the uh, sheath part of it. Again, looks really good. I'm not sure if I really, if I'm really liking the little uh, maple tip on there, but that's okay. But anyway, uh, the magnets that I put inside work really well, just like that, and even and holds in place. So there's a, just a pair of uh, pair of those super magnets in there. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, different application might do a different, try a different way. But uh, overall, I think it looks pretty good. Tucks in my sock very nicely, and uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. So I'll try to figure out what my next project is. So talk to you later. Bye.